in the field of geoinformatics. Yes, sir. Please start. What happened? Okay. Now it is okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And working uh, in the field of geoinformatics last uh, almost twenty uh, twenty years. Uh, so it's a nice event for me also to introduce myself to the and very uh, vibrant participants. Here the, the list was shared by Mr. New, uh, Director. Uh, AF Alvida Foundations. I found it almost 160 persons has registered themselves for this uh, seminar, seminars or webinar, webinar as, as such. Today's session is completely on introductory part and parcels of remote sensing and GIS. Will you meet this technology has a huge application sites and even after 20 years, many more areas are untouched from the person like, like me, because this technology is a very wide range of applications. So from our stone age to the till date means uh, invention of a very small tools for hunting to the reaches to the Google, we are always in search. We discover, yes, wheel is the biggest inventory that speed up the all discoveries and <coughs> Uh, field of science as such, but still we are in need. Nowadays we are everywhere, uh, we are in need of location specific information. That location specific information is goes to the credit of remote sensing and JS. How remote sensing and JS work and help us to build our database or how we uh, uh, use uh, the geoinformatic as such for our day-to-day -day life or our research or any kind of application that we will cover in today's session. This is this just a synoptic presentations from Stone Age to the till era of Google. Conceptually, we are in search. Yesterday, usually in Indian condition, we uh, when the Google was not available, we are rely on the person or the person to persons. For every small information, we ask to the very unknown persons, uh, where is Albedo Foundations the concern will take a minute and she thinks, okay, Albedo Foundation is on College Road. Uh, it might be in near Krishinagar, then it is located in uh, Prabhu Prasad building. All are the part and parcel of the Nashik. Nashik is uh, one of the metro town in Maharashtra. Maharashtra uh, is stated state in India. India is a part of South Asia and South Asia is a part of Asia and Asia is a part of globe. This is the reference uh, information related to all bit of conditions. That is the study uh, year stories. But nowadays, today we are just one small instrument or small uh, smart uh, smartphone is with us. We have to just start albedo. So it will showcase us the how many albedos are in the database of Google's and they are highlighted to the locations. All this credit goes to the, this technology. Of course, IT is there, but uh, whatever the uh, location specific information is available on the net or on any platform that are the credit of the remote sensing and GIS community, communities. So when I start our video foundation, it shows me locations, even that uh, not only locations, it shows me the, the photograph of office, whatever be the load uploaded by that uh, person institute or the person, person as such or the, that particular institute. And then they had mentioned the detail address, uh, operating times, uh, contact numbers, and blah, blah things. So everything is available on a very single click. So how it happens in Easter year, if you go to the uh, seller times, the direction and angles, these are the basic things which when one learns to move from one uh, place to another places with the help of directions and angle. Sunrise in the east, sunset in the west, then the uh, stars in the night, they are the guiding stars, means especially a guiding stars for the seller. The very first journey was started uh, using the ships and all that things, but behind the ships and all the things to relocate and uh, return to the our original base or the base point or base location. That is the key invention of man uh, from the say, Stone, Age, uh, Stone Age era. And they learn to mark, create uh, the monument and they return back to, to their original uh, original place or the original, uh, what you call the habitant. So that location specific information is always exist, but they have a different form of use. 
here for oh, india is one of the great organization survey of india survey of india has started serving the indian continent that indian continent includes the today's afghanistan pakistan bangladesh sri lanka myanmar and it uh, reaches up to the uh, uh, northern or the southern part of the uh, russia russia as well so they had uh, performed the theodolite surveys surveys means they are searching the location specific information gathered all information even that in the era of uh, uh, year 18 1800 centuries uh, they had estimated the height of uh, mount everest and the name, name of uh, uh, everest that the highest peak on the globe is given after the sir everest he is the in charge of that mission, uh, missions so the name of everest is uh, given to the highest peak that the uh, uh, himalayan one of the highest peak in the himalayan uh, regions so that survey leads to the identifications of the all low and deeps in the, across the uh, indian continent and they had documented and <coughs> sorry created a map maps for the all indian subcontinent that maps till date a refer for their accuracy information and what <coughs> some important uh, information is up, uh, available use uh, for the launching of satellites till date so uh, this is latitude and longitude a class a classroom level or the say middle class level information so earth is spherical and earth is divided into latitude and longitude from the center of earth if we move towards northward or the pole world then that is called as the latitude means angle created to the center of earth is the latitude the value of latitude ranges from 0 to 90 0 to 90 north means we are in the northern hemisphere 0 to 90 south means means we are the southern hemispheres if we move <coughs> on a surface uh, around the center of the earth which generate the longitude the longitude value is total is 0 to 360 but again it divide uh, the earth as such into eastern spherical and western sp uh, spherical here is the picture the equator is the middle east line and prime meridian is the middle east line for the long longitude the value of latitude goes for 90 plus 90 means north minus 90 means south when we merge this we have a gridded maps so entire globe get flattened on a flat paper when we uh, we understood the earth is not a, a completely a flat it is a spherical and it has a angular the surface so when we flat the earth entire entire earth as such we have to compromise with a certain properties that properties are the either it may be a shape of a particular location size or the area so all these are the mathematical jugglery so all it is controlled by the standard mathematical formulas and they had to estimate so whenever the, there is a matter of cadastre cadastre means if you are dealing with the land parcel if you are in the business of land parcel selling land parcel and that thing that time the this geo reference information is hardly used they believe on the manual manual surveys or the uh, conventional surveys the picture which we had shown here this kind of surveys are more reliable for the small pocket now we come to the uh, keep in your mind that latitude and longitude are the basic uh, locations that refer by the any any system even your uh, mobile is also referring that latitude and longitude based on that latitude and longitude all information linked to particular places that will cover in the gis sections okay now we are going to the basic concept of the remote sensing as i told you we are always in search or we generate the cues we are habitual to generate the cues what we are color height type texture natural or artificial blah 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 things from our childhood to the uh, say old age so every time we had generated the n number of questions that n number of questions are converted to data so how we train ourselves that is the biggest thing we need a trainer generally our family or parents are our basic trainer then when we reach to the school teachers are our uh, trainer so every tenure perform certain kinds of information to the our minds whatever we see 
as such that has need to be classify identify based on their so many identical uh, characteristics so our brain is trained based on what we perceive from our eyes so our eyes is the best source of remote sensing means that is you may call as as a camera or satellite as such the entire uh, satellite remote sensing uh, schematic uh, is uh, depicted in this slide we need energy we need interactive atmosphere we need interaction with the target we need sensor our eyes are the sensor not only eyes but our all sensory organs are the sensors then transmission reception and processing that is a completely a mechanical part inter interpretation and analysis this is govern or depends upon the uh, trainer uh, what you call the analyst means it is a person dependent how we expert in the particular areas and then applic application so these all are the schematic views of the remote sensing system or the particular satellite remote sensing system what happened in day to day life here are the four five types of the chairs are there but suddenly one day we uh, experience a certain new kinds of chair with the cushion and all that things so that time in the childhood stage our mind is not able to identify whether what is this so based on size shapes use and basic material we had learned to identify and differentiate the things from one one, uh, one from another so that is happens with the help of the trainer and our mind uh, stored all information in the event or information in the form of pictures only generally if i am a person to person that we call the experience but in technical terms that we call as the data and that data is always used and reuse based on our you uh, what you call the our objectives we are the first no in history a number of examples are there so if you are a traveler or if you are a visitor or you are a history lover if you love archaeology then you need to have a survey that time so it is a very common example that <coughs> all forts are built on the top why the simple reason is defense and then have a synoptic view synoptic view means what this bird uh, is sitting on the top of the building and they have a, both the views of the all all round views where to land for a food or for a hunting so this is the basic phenomena and using this uh, elevations the forts are always built on the top of the top of the hills or the at an elevated portions here we uh, typic uh, catch uh, the location of the raigad fort raigad is the capital of uh, great maratha empire chhatrapati shivaji maharaj so this raigad fort is surrounded by the seven layers of hills and that all uh, hills are the rock solid and the foundation is <coughs> or uh, identified say around uh, almost 300 to 400 year, year backs when they had been means 400 year backs they have a knowledge of remote sensing but their tool their applications their uh, data gathering uh, procedure was quite different what than to, uh, today's media then another uh, left hand uh, right hand side bottom image is of an watershed watershed is in the geographical unit that is drain from and common points but they had not built uh, their oldest water tank they built at and the outlets means every generation have their own info, own way of uh, storing information analyzing information and gathering information this is images from the run of kutch this is a run of kutch is a part of uh, gujarat state again gujarat is a Uh, state in the uh, indian uh, so sub indian subcontinent so means every generation has utilized the knowledge and basic concept of remote sensing and gis using whatever the available at that time the tools available at that time so uh, this is called as synoptic view synoptic view means we are comparing one end with another end one portion with another portion one part with another part that part gives us the best information or the best sites for our applications or our objective so these are the modern platforms of the remote sensing means binocular yes it's a part of remote sensing then uavs drone though drone is the very latest version of platform latest platform then hyperspectral lidar optical lidar 
then airborne multi spectral hyperspectral sar and lidar aerial photography spacecraft uh, satellite constellation multi spectral hyperspectral and sar all these are the platforms means we are generating data using all these uh, depicted platforms generally at a height of 700 to 900 uh, kilometer from the earth surface remote sensing a remote sensing satellite are installed uh, at an uh, sun synchronous particularly a sun synchronous satellite was installed at an 700 to 900 km from the earth, earth surface so uh, these are the experimental photographs in italy uh, when a very light weighted camera was invented in the early era, era uh, say around uh, 18th or 19th century so they had mounted the cameras on the chest of the doors and they had taken the aerial aerial flight of a city and they had generated the information that was the first reported remote sensing application or the photographic application for for um, map generation or the information information generation then with the advancements of aviation system the aerial photography comes into picture aerial photography takes a view of an any location from the two different angle set uh, view of a same location from two different angle help us to depict the altitude or the calculate the altitude of a of a particular loca locations so using aerial photography survey of india has generated the or scan entire indian subcontinent including uh, the our neighboring country nowadays once upon a time they are the part and parcel of the india but nowadays are the neighboring country afghanistan pakistan bangladesh myanmar so all the basic information is available with the survey of india so that time uh, we are ruled by uh, say <coughs> some other uh, means uh, what do you call uh, i the name of that agen agency who had completed uh, this kinds of sur survey and all that things if i recall it i will share with you so a recent uh, historic event re related to the uh, satellite remote sensing when was the first satellite launch? Ask this question. The answer is uh, on the 4th of October 1957, uh, the USSR um, that time, uh, uh, today Russia has launched the first satellite. What happened? The uh, story goes to the Second World War. Second World War in the, uh, in the year, say, 1945, 44 That time, one thing comes into existence that if you wish to win a war or battle, you need a space in your hands. So the race was begin in between US and the USSR, who will become the king of one space. So they started uh, developing their technology and inventions, discoveries and all that things. The very first, uh, what you call the landmark event was uh, by launching of satellite by Russia. Uh, and then after in 1960, very operational satellite was launched by the US. That is the TRIOS. That is the meteorological satellite and that sent it the picture to the Earth or for the uh, study of cloud, cloud motion and identification of different ground of different types of cloud. So what is the scenario that time in India? Now uh, you compare India in 1960s or 70s. That time the economic condition of India is not too strong. But still, the two person, very renowned person and scientist, they are the founder of this technology, two technologies. Uh, they approached to the government, we wish and we need to enter in the space era. So that time very fun was created. One cartoon was published that time in the very renowned uh, daily news, English daily newspaper, that, even, uh, that the meaning of it is that India doesn't have any capacity to feed uh, population twice. Uh, twice in a day and they are uh, dreaming about the space technology and all that thing so these kinds of fun was created by media that time but that these two peoples are very much firm in their the dreams uh, i would like to share one more thing about these two people they are from the richest family even uh, if they decide need not to work okay they will survive with the luxury life but they are passionate about their dreams one is dr vikram sarabhai founder of they say, space technology and another one is uh, Dr. Homi, Homi Baba. The coincidence is that 
or we may call it it's the natural arrangement or it's a god gift when they are a part and parcel of indian institute of science one more third renowned person is or the dean of these two extraordinary means we are not able to talk about these two great personalities or heroes of india so that third personality is uh, dr uh, raman sir raman sir was the dean when they are a student and now they proposed the site we need uh, to build and the satellite launching station so they search out the, the best place which is near to equator and having the best uh, possible uh, geo location that help us to build the satellite that satellite launching uh, launching station they identified the thumba village at thumba equatorial station now this this is the practical working stations of uh, isro or called as india and that is near, nearer to tiruvananthapuram tiruvananthapuram is one of the metro city now it is in kerala again kerala is a part and parcel uh, on the western coast of india so they search out the location in 1960 none of the Uh, what you call the resources or amenities are available so they start their working behind the mary magdalene church they had created one shaded room and uh, they start their researching and building their water whatever is available and one more thing is that uh, that dr apj kalam abdul kalam sir was a trainee there to learn or the as a internee or trainee to learn the uh, <coughs> basics of satellite technologies so it start their uh, journey in 1957 and in within 10 years they launched first rocket uh, rohini uh, rh75 rh means rohini 75 is the diameter of a particular that pipe used to build a rocket and in 1980 they had got their first satellite launch uh, success india as such and that 80 started the era of remote sensing in india particularly now this uh, carrying some material on cycle so you can understand the what sort of uh, resources are available but still from cycle to the, this very uh, what you call the up to date or the modern uh, era of isro so all credit goes to the two visionary persons dr homi baba and of course uh, dr sara bai sir so after that when we launch our satellites particularly irs indian remote sensing satellite the journey or popularization of the satellite technology started uh, reaches to the ground root level in a very early days of irs the professors students or the scholars from the various university called to the uh, research stations and they had trained to understand these kinds of technology whatever the technology or computer system was available and they start to propagate using the the same satellite database the state wise remote sensing centers was established that era is around 90 1990 so my center mrsec was also established during that era well supported by the some national uh, level agencies so now we look at the definition this is the pictorial definition i have created whatever i observe either it is a object event it may be a single or it may be a sim synoptic and get the information and analyze that information with the help of computers so these four or five features are pictures are the my way of presentation the, what is the remote sensing so technically remote sensing is process of detecting and monitoring the physical characteristics of an area by measuring its reflected and emitted radiation at a distance is need not to touch any any part and parcel of the object so that is called a remote sensing so remote sensing technology use uh, image acquisition spectral signature spatial resolution spectral resolution so all these are the technical terms we will uh, <coughs> uh, look at one by one so radiant energy is measured by an aerial or the satellite sensor so electromagnetic energy written from our surface that will be get sacrificed using the prism so prism is uh, differentiated uh, all uh, returning beam from uh into different shades of visible lights why it's visible only this band 0.4 to 0.7 uh, nanometer nanometers is sensible to our eyes while the uh, spectrum of uh, radiation started from the gamma rays to the radio rays out of that we use only uh, optical 
and the infrared bands. Why this optical? Because atmosphere is open to optical uh, optical band and sun emits maximum energy in optical uh, optical regions. Why we experience uh, uh, our uh, signals are green and red because a red band is more static while the blue band is uh, prone to the scattering. That's why we experience the blue sky and we experience the hot sun, hot red sun before morning, uh, just before morning and at the time of sunsets because these two bands are the very stable. While this is a very common uh, uh, graph which are shown uh, while comparing to the different bands, visible bands. So here, NIR, uh, near infrared band are reflected maximum by the healthy vegetation, while water absorb all the uh, incidence energies. Okay, these are the two satellites from where we can generate our database, sun synchronous and the polar orbiting. Generally, polar orbiting satellites are the telecommunication and meteorological satellite. They are static and they cover the same region 24 by 7. But for sun synchronous, the fund of sun synchronous means the satellite is synchronized with the location of sun. Now, for example, in India, the satellite starts scanning at 10.30. 10.30 is the local timing. So everywhere time is not the same. The <coughs> time changes and always compare with the uh, meridian, meridian time. So data acquisition time is 10.30. So when uh, suppose today satellite is passed from India and collected the data from Kashmir to Kanyakumari means north to south, then where it will cover or collect the database on the globe, so it will cover or collect the database where the local time is 10.30. Means in India, 10.30 means in Saudi, it is 8.30 within a two hours. So it will reaches to over the Saudi or the Gulf countries. So that time Gulf countries have a local time 10 30 the database for gulf then after gulf it reaches to the south africa then up to atlantic then america and so on so whatever the data generated that is of 10 30 hours of local times what is the use of that so we can generate or compare generate the mosaic of entire globe and compare one part with the another part because shadow and all these things are the on the same side this is the scale. tilde. This much numbers of satellites are revolving around the earth, around the earth. So this is the uh, basic information. Uh, whenever we study a light as such, it uh, transmitted direct, uh, direction to the different direction, reflected, uh, refracted, scattering, scattering confirmed to the blue band and the reflection. Every uh, every satellite or every band of satellite have a the uh, their own value, values or characteristics. And generally we, as a remote sensing, we means satellite <coughs> use reflected energy, cover uh, whatever the information cover that is transmitted to the ground station, ground station to the processing unit and processing unit generator imagery, imageries. So once we have a set of bands, uh, generally, IRS, Indian Remote Sensing Satellite, use four bands, uh, blue, green, red, and NIR. Out of that, blue is not used uh, regularly. So, and all bands have a only a gray color. Whatever we received, that are the gray colors. To train our eyes or for our <coughs> convenience, we import false colors. We import blue, green, and red colors. We import green color. Uh, we import blue color to the green band uh, red. Uh, we import a red color to the near infrared band, green color to the red band, and blue color to the green band. Using this RGB, we generate multi-spectral false color composite. That false color composite help us to identify uh, the feature based on the differentiation of color tone. So here is the example. So, uh, themes available in a single image forest, crop, urban, and the wastelands. So, what is this? 
So this is the signature of an with two famous Indian personalities, Amitabh Bachchan and uh, fourth person Tendulkar. So we can identify a person from his signature. Similarly, every feature on the images is identified with the help of sign uh, signature. Here is the IR band. Here is the healthy visitations. This visitation reflected maximum energy. While in the red band, red band is utilized in the photo process of photosynthesis, so the reflection is very less. Similarly, green and uh, blue band is also helpful. Green is uh, compared to, compared to red. Uh, green is not required in photosynthesis, but blue and red bands are very much utilized in the uh, act of photosynthesis or the process of photosynthesis. So the reflected values are the minimal, while NIR, NIR infrared are the maximum maximum values. Using kinds of vision, identify the features or the vegetation types. Then no, another one is the spatial resolution. Spatial resolution means how much area is covered by a particular sensor. So initially it starts from kilometer to the, now it reaches to the uh, below kilometer le level. Here, one same patch is covered. Here is the pixel size is eight kilometer and here is the 10, 10 kilometer, 10 meters, uh, sorry. Uh, 8 kilometer to the 10 meters. So level of information in 8 kilometer pixel, I am not able, even in the 1 kilometer pixel, I am not able to identify any feature. Because in 10 kilometer, sorry, 10 meter features, I can identify the road, building, uh, the lake, and all those things. Means information, here is the same example. 30 meter, 10 meters, and 1 meter. In 30 meter, I am hardly identified few, two, three bands, uh, two, three color pixels, but in one meter, I'm able to identify the road and the other features. So that is called a special resolution. Spectral resolution means how many numbers of bands used by a particular sensor. That's called a spectral resolution. So means, uh, as I told earlier, IRS use four band, blue, green, red, and IR infrared. While radar use only one band. For a drone, again, it depends upon the, your objectives. So radiometric resolutions. Radiometric resolution means it's a inherent capability of a particular sensor to differentiate between two features. Okay, based on the reflected values. If it is a one bit, means it will generate the two values, zero and one. Zero means either feature is present or absent. If it is 256 levels, means the same area or the same bands will, sorry, uh, differentiate the features into 256 levels. So based using that database, we can uh, have a choice to what sort of or what sort of radiometry is required for our satellite satellite things or the sensor sensor as such things. In one bit database, the value or the capacity of that image is very minimal. While in 256 level, the capacity or the size of that image is quite maximum. I will simplify it. If you are a uh, user of uh, very handy Nokia phone that was available uh, around 2005, if you take an image, that image capacity is only in bits, 110, 120, or 130 bits. And if you are using today's uh, smartphone and you click your image, that will goes into MB. So that is the difference of these radiometric resolutions. In uh, conventional mobile phones, the camera was not equipped with the high radiometric resolutions. Now it, they are uh, equipped with the very high uh, radiometric resolution. So one image is of four, uh, four MB, around four to five MB in size, or even better than that. So that is the comparison, or that is the difference between radiometric resolution. Temporal resolution means how frequently a satellite can visit to a particular location. Here, IRS satellites are visiting this three that sensor is uh, visiting on 24th day. Every 24th day, it will reach or to the same location. And uh, AVIPS is the another uh, that reaches within five, five days. That is called a temporal resolution. Scanning, uh, they perform two types of scanning, sorry. So uh, every scanning, scan number have, uh, scan number is given to the all uh, flight or the path of the satellite that is called a path and when we divided that path into conven convenient uh, size and shape that is called a row 
for entire state of Mah Maharashtra, only 30, uh, 24 images are re required back to back. And the number of uh, path and roads can help us to identify a, a specific location because you need to uh, order your database. While ordering uh, your database, you have to mention the path and roads of your lo locations. That is the Indian system. So how one can uh, identify a feature on a remote sensing ima uh, sat satellite images? So that is the, these are the uh, keys, tone or color, texture, pattern, shape, size, shadow, site association. All these are the key tools. Using that key tools, we can identify on the remote sensing images. So this is the bright red or the dull red or the blackish red. This is a tone texture. This bright red is appears quite smooth compared to the, this uh, blackish blackish red. Then pattern. Am I audible? Become sir. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So pattern, uh, this is the natural vegetation and this is a plantation, practically a, a orange plant plantations. So size and shape, uh, this is perfectly in a square or square shape and here is the irregular shape. Shadow, these are the two main monuments from the two different part of the India and their shadow, <coughs> Shadow depicted the two different seasons. Right one is the Taj Mahal from Agra, while the shadows are is moving toward the northern side. The uh, left hand side is being is in past. This image is from uh, Bibi Kamakbara image is from the month of May, and this image from January or practically in uh, December. So sun angle orientation, all are control. <clears throat> our help us to identify the features in the remote sensing uh, images, associations, bridge and the river, then the rail and the road crossing. So these are the permanent associations. So we be using this primary information, we can identify the features. So identification is one part and converting that uh, identified uh, images into data is a, another part. So for another application, we use geographic forms computer added program and using on. So here XY, XYZ is uh, locational information. XY means uh, latitude, longitude and height, linear features, length in meter or kilometer, area, square meter, square kilometer, hectare and so on. So raster data represents the four type of uh, features, surface. Okay, surface was uh, represented in the raster database. Raster data cells and data categories also includes aerial and satellite images, there are two types of raster data, continuous and discrete. An example, uh, so it's a comparison. Example of discrete uh, uh, data is population density. Continuous data example is temperature and elevation. Uh, okay, elevation me measurement. So we can generate the database. So this is pictorial presentation. When I present point, so it will appear as a point, but the same point will appear as a pixel, one single pixel in the raster model line, it may be a starting point and ending point. So here is the beginning pixel and the ending pixel. And area, area is close. Starting and ending points are the same for the area features. But in uh, raster vector vary accordingly. So this is the example of the continuous data sets. Continuous data we can represent with the help of the rasters. This is the elevations in meters. While uh, transforming or generating the database from remote sensing to the GIS, we use difference pattern, manual digitizing. Nowadays, this is the absolute, uh, uh, what you call the method. Nobody is uh, preferring a scanner, then scan digitizer and all these things, head of digitizing. So everybody is pre uh, preferring on-screen digitization. So we uh, open our satellite images and generate the area of our interest or the features of our interest. Then Pogo geometry, land record geometries, keyboard was database, database entry. This may be practiced in many departments. Geocoding, global position system, and image processing. Using image processing system, we can generate the database for the land applications and 
uh, what you call the land is related applications. So while we are generating the database in GIS, we may have faced the topological errors, input errors, output errors. Uh, they are all related with the act of digitization. So every uh, features what we have created, they are linked with their attribute database, or that is called the relational data, uh, relational tables. If it is a point, so every information is recorded uh, in the table, table format. How we generate the data, database creation in, in the environment. After 2000, so every information is personalized and uh, that is available to the global set. Personal information, professional information, academic, economic, health, tribal food, or area of interest, single source is mobile. What sort of content you are accessing through your mobiles get recorded somewhere else, and that recording or the collection of that kinds of database is converted to database. And all database is a collection of information that is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed, and updated. So there is a standard Wikipedia encryption, survey, observation, manuscript, books, database vary from person to person. Means the data I can may be collected by one institute may not be useful for the another institute means again it depends upon the purpose and utility so these all these are the types of database that is not important right? so what are the basic quality if i am concerned with the gis my database need to be accurate reliable easy to understand organized expandable expandable means if i share with other institute okay they can carry editable interchangeable means one format can be changed to another company accessible easy to accessible and standard so concept of standard means so again it's a, a simple representation accurate reliable easy to understand uh, easy to understand means encryption and what we uh, read into whatsapp applications organize expandable editable accessible or the things so standard means uh, <clears throat> Many things is much more uh, louder and uh, clear about what we're creating about the database. So here is the simplest example, data standard. Is it possible to read this text, textbook? My, some of the average person may are able to read it. But when we depicted this picture, so it will give, okay, these are the washroom signs in the Chinese, Arabic, and uh, washroom boards, Chinese, Arabic, and Japanese. But every, it is not possible for a person to learn all the things, but the standard picture help them to identify the particular set. The similar things can be applicable for the GIS and remote sensing database creation. I'm right now switching to the final applications where we can find the applications So these are the applications of remote sensing and GIS. Now it is uh, precision farming, location specific farming, marketing, survey, transportation, tracking, uh, location based information, disaster management, help, help in all sectors that can be performed with the help of remote sensing and GIS. Now it is trend, uh, uh, if I talk about the trends, the, every agency is looking after to how to, uh, serve all the things using the satellite te technologies, ground station operation, satellite, all these things. So I had catch this uh, slide from the internet as such. Nowadays, small satellites catching the <coughs> attention, satellite for internet of things, advanced payload system, in orbit service set, advanced ground system services for uh, surveillance purpose, defense purpose, and all those things. Nowadays, Every application means uh, this comes from the UAV leader, leader to the now satellite are uh, installed or launched for the purpose of internet services also. So in coming era, eras, maybe uh, details like services may be possible. So we can get uh, uh, what you call Wi-Fi internet like services using the small dish. So nowadays we are purchasing DTS. Similarly, in future it's possible have a services through satellites. So these are 
all these are the applications are related to remote sensing and gis my view one hour is not sufficient to cover on my side because i have very long presentation but anyway so this is from my side keeping uh, the instruction from the organization i stop here if you have any query you may raise or uh, the director may help in this regard please okay user need information on forest water body crop urban and uh, wasteland generally we use ndvi uh, normalized dead vegetation index that use the nir and the red bands so this is the simplest example in indian condition there are the two cropping season one is kharif means uh, that is synonym to the monsoon season and one is the rabi season based on the ndvi values we can identify the crops available in the fields generally the sowing start in the month of may and june practically we take a data from may so that's why its value is zero when the kharif means the cotton crop is uh, cotton and soybean is planted <coughs> in a field they start germinating the uh, life span of a soybean is of 90 days so it's reaches to the maturity in october while the life span of a cotton crop is more than 120 days so the graph or the values reaches up to the january so based on the trends occur uh, observe uh, in the reflection or the ndv values we can identify or differentiate the soybean and cotton crop similarly for the rabi seasons the rabi season comes in the month of october two three crop early wheat late wheat and the gram crop are there means early gram or late is there based on their uh, phenotypic performance or the ground cover and the reflected values we have generated by the cropping side uh, different cropings these are the ground information so this is the typical picture or the signature of the gram gram crop this is the bright red uh, bright red is wheat while a pinkish tone is of gram and some tones of blackish red that is uh, that are the mixed jungles we are collected this information reaching to the particular site so sorry magenta color uh, color in the water body that are the water hyacinths we can identify based on the pictorial properties agriculture seasonal change these are the same locations here in the month of uh, march april and this is in the october sorry october november november so same change and with the help of the satellite images uh, these are the <coughs> same locations even after we can identify the patches of harvested uh, product crop acreage estimation crop change variation field formation canal irrigation well change in agricultural land farmer support seasonal loss due to storms soil soil moisture disease and pest can be observed with the help of remote sensing including change type demarcation forest fire monitoring remote survey and migrations so this is a patch uh, near yatmal in maharashtra on the 2004 this is reemergence of forest then forest fire they are from the nigeria probably yes uh using the a modis database uh, soil and water erosion these patches are from the basin of uh, chambal so change in the water course soil erosion also depicted then oxbow formations is also depicted in the same same images so water body water body means uh, every year in maharashtra water crisis is the important issue so how many water is available in particular uh, tank or the reserve <coughs> reservoirs identify with the help of remote sensing then this is migration or the submergence related study this is indira gandhi uh, indira sagar sorry indira sagar dam in madhya pradesh so submergence land use change migration biodiversity infrastructure resource change overall change was monitored with the help of satellite images 
uh, this is old harsur this old uh, this town was submerged in a uh, year 2003 and now it is relocated or rehabilitated to new an another place that is new harsur new harsur so locational change and rehabilitation we perform uh, this is canal related studies uh, this is the canal rich uh, portion uh, around hoshangabad town in madhya pradesh so we can change and monitor rural application whether we have a transport and cadastral information well information land use and household information this can be judged with the help of remote sensing and gis so this is gis application and all these are the generated from the satellite image images then landslide studies or the disaster manage, management so in the recent year 2006 when malin event was happened in western ghats so before and after applications can easily manage uh, industrial disaster then uh, this is applications of uh, torrential uh, rains at 5:30 hours uh, the rains patches were active somewhere in the center of uh, <coughs> maharashtra within next 3 hours they had reaches cover the entire vidarbha regions and next 3 hours it is Uh, move away from particular things means whatever the torrential rains occurred that are covered this much numbers of districts then aviations we can have a uh, nowadays this is uh, captured from the flight radar 24 we can have a uh, every information related to the avian aviation then transport station studies what are the change across the narmada river within 20 years that is monitor with the help of satellite applications this image is of 2005 and this image of say 2019 one long bridge was constructed to change in the periphery of the fetri village how to land evaluation changes one ring road passes from the village name fetri the land evaluation changes multi times in 2009 nothing is there and 2020 a number of uh, what you call the farm or the farmlands are converted to the residential or the commercial purposes these are the geological studies this is very famous line uh, crater lonar crater left hand side and this is ramdo this site is in the uh, rajasthan near to the shivpur district of madhya pradesh but this seems to be a uh, similar but they are the, this is the crater formation and this is the depression so based on the shape and size one may Uh, locationally vary from each other so one can study geomorphology land from liniment drainage network ground network then mining uh, again <coughs> this is the best site for the sand mining all these are the tawa reservoir or the tawa river tawa river and this is main course of the narmada rivers in the madhya pradesh lakhs of tons of sand is deposited every year the tawa in the tawa tawa river that is that sand gets have a value of crores of rupees so it can be my uh, monitor then dikes all these are the dikes water bearing dikes water resistant carrying dikes can be identified find similarly wind wheels also mounted all these pictures are from the nandur bar gradual change <coughs> in the locality due to uh, new up what do you call the new applications these are the solar plants solid across the run of kash few are from himachal and one are from nagpur this is again it is from the what do you call gulf countries harvest season uh, trends in agriculture land this site is somewhere else in europe and this is Uh, catch it from the google applications how they can load urban applications old city okay this is a very planned city and this is a uh, site from india old as such this is planned city commercial application lidar drone uavs this is about the micro level planning use of lidars watershed management so we can have identify the base sites for construction uh, then the ravines uh, typical ravines from the chambal river chambal rivers 
watershed management using 3D views. Two thousand eighteen Krishna River basins before and after change impact analysis, greenness and water spread due to construction of one small barrier, plantation, <coughs> and this is okay. I have one important uh, Iraq War story, nineteen ninety. The war was begin uh, in the month of uh, what you call uh, December. And that time, the entire Gulf country is getting cheat. Okay, so Iraq have an uh, confidence, so no one can identify their hidden bunker, means underground bunker. Uh, during that war, but America is far away from uh, means far for application point of view. Americans are much ahead of Iraq, so they had scanned entire uh, Iraq portion with thermal band. And they had identified the white spot on their uh, images. Means entire uh, desert is cool, but few are the pockets where the hotness is there. And they hit that hot uh, hot spot or the bright spot. That bright spots are the bunkers, because Iraqi <coughs> Iraqi soldiers are used to have a heater in their bunkers to protect themselves. That heat generation is. Are appear as a hot spot on the thermal band. That is a era core application. At the time of Kargil, uh, Indian use GPS system to conquer fight against uh, uh, intruders, Pakistani intruders, and all those things. So this is defense related application. Uh, this is Galwan Valley, the recent crisis. It is on the monitor with the help of remote sensing. And finally, nowadays everything is. Related to the marketing applications, location-specific information in all sectors. So all these are the applications of remote sensing and GIS. Uh, and every field is going to serve through satellite. 